Join me to talk about that and other theories. We welcome back Philip Holloway, and he can hit this from about every angle. You're a pilot, flight instructor, attorney, former police officer, Navy. So a uh, great resume for a topic like this. Let's hit that. A lot of people talking about the transponders. Do you, in any way, it was not human intervention here from your vantage point? Not as I can tell. You know, a transponder is a device that almost all airplanes are equipped with. And in this particular case, they have two, a uh, primary and a backup. A transponder is used to help air traffic controllers identify what they see on their radar screen with a specific airplane. In other words, they see this squawk code, and that's what it is, a four-digit code that's assigned to that flight, and they see it on their screen, and then they know it is this specific aircraft on this specific flight plan. It gives heading, altitude, airspeed, all sorts of information to the air traffic controllers. If you turn it off, and you can turn them off, they have an off switch. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the air traffic controller is going to see is a passive return. You know, you can pick up a flock of birds on a radar, uh, and that's why we have to have these transponders is so that the air traffic controllers will know exactly what aircraft they're dealing with. Okay. And, we're, we're, and coming up, we'll be chatting with you. We're going to hit some of the theories, including yours, in a little bit. But again, so your take is transponder deliberately turned off. So depressurized cabin, you're not seeing that now because they go off 14 minutes apart. Does that debunk that real quick? I think so, yeah. I think it does. Okay, got it. Okay, more from Philip coming up in a little bit. Back with us, our expert, Philip Holloway. Again, pilot, flight instructor, attorney, former police officer, Navy as well. I know you've studied this very well. What do you think of that? 58% of the people believe it's hijacked and may have even landed. Your thoughts on that theory? Well, that's the percentage that I'm in. I, I'm, I'm with that group, and mm. I think that the gentleman uh, with, the F, with the FBI that we just showed was, uh, I think, right on the money. You know, what troubles me the most about this case is that you had 14 minutes between the time that the transponders were turned off and then the ACAR system was turned off. So that indicates to me that there's some type of human activity going on to make these things happen. Now, if that's the case, if human beings are purposely turning off these transmitting devices, there can be no legitimate reason for it other than some type of hijacking or commandeering. And I'm afraid, my personal fear, and I certainly hope it's not true, but my fear is that somebody stole this airplane. For what purpose? One can only imagine, but it can't be good. Mm. So there you go. And again, that's uh, part of the 58%. Phillip's in that uh, ca camp right now. We're talking about this plane hijack may have landed as well. Let's take a look at some of the other theories. And we talked a little bit about it yesterday. Now we have new information. You went over hijacked may have landed. Hijacked by pilots or crew. Does anything tell you, or is, it t is that too specific to really know at this point? Well, if it, was, if it was hijacked or commandeered or stolen, it was obviously done by somebody who knew how to operate the airplane. Mm -hmm. So you cannot eliminate the pilots as suspects. Uh, there could have also been other people on that plane that knew how to fly. We've obviously seen that before here in America. Uh, that's not beyond the realm of possibility. It could have been that the, the pilots were overcome by some third parties. Um, and maybe the plane is on the bottom of the ocean. Maybe it wasn't stolen. Maybe it was a an attempt at a theft. Got it. But I do think that human beings are responsible for the loss of transmission. I think human beings are responsible for the course deviation. It was headed straight towards islands and deserts. You know, that aircraft could land in 5,000 feet of, of, of ground. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to take off from the same place so that it lands. So a plane that size, a 777, could land in that part of the world, and you don't think it'd be picked up by some satellite, some radar, some detection device? If you were going to do this and you were going to plan this type of a crime, you would have to meticulously plan it to find a place where it would be very isolated, it would be out of the range of any radars, and you could camouflage the aircraft immediately upon landing it. And this part of the world could fit that bill? I believe it could. It's, okay. pretty, it's, it's, it's a remote area of the world. There's not a lot out there. And I think that there's a lot of small islands that might fit the bill. There's certainly some deserts in the, within that arc or within that radius. Got it. Okay. Now, the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 could be the biggest mystery in aviation history. But back with us, our expert, Philip Holloway. You look at, we just look back in history there. Would this be the biggest mystery in aviation history, considering all the tracking devices that we have nowadays? Well, if this airplane is never found, I think absolutely, yes, it would. 
last night I was having dinner with my wife and she said, you know, it just absolutely baffles me that an aircraft this size in this day and age is just going to disappear without a trace. So yes, I think it absolutely does have the possibility of being the greatest mystery of all time in terms of aviation. Yeah, when you consider the size, and, and everybody said it, we can find an iPhone with a GPS, yet we cannot find a 777. Will it be found? I think it will be found, and I do think there is going to be a logical explanation for this. What I fear is that, and what I hope it does not happen, I hope we don't find it flying over a major city somewhere uh, with a bomb strapped to it. Uh, I hope it wasn't stolen. I hope it was not stolen by terrorists. I hope it was not stolen for use uh, in any type of criminal activity like that. Uh, you almost hope that it has uh, made it to the bottom of the ocean and that that is the logical explanation. When you talk in those terms and, and there's a nefarious plot behind this, what, what tells you that from the facts that you know right now? Is it, you know, because something that, that would, I wouldn't say benign because you still would be talking about a tragedy, but there's decompression in the cabin. Would that explain any of this, transponders going off? But I guess that theory kind of gets debunked if, if this plane makes a turn, right? It does. The, the, the airplane keeps flying for five hours. The transponders were turned off, and we, can al we almost know with, with a practical certainty that it was done by human beings. So if it's hijacked or stolen, why haven't we heard anything from hijackers? Normally, they take mm -hmm. an airplane, and they go to another country, and they demand a ransom and this, that, and the other. We've heard nothing. So that suggests to me that if this aircraft was hijacked and if it landed somewhere, then it is being hidden. And then the, that raises the question, why and for what purpose is it being hidden? Yeah, I heard that early on, you know, someone was saying, well, if it was terrorism, somebody would be claiming responsibility, but not necessarily if another plot was being planned in, in the midst of Not this. if the mission is incomplete. Yeah, boom, there it is. Okay, Philip, thanks again. We'll, we'll talk a little bit further about a half hour from now. One in a billion chance. Let's bring back our expert, Philip Holloway, certified flight instructor, pilot, attorney, former police officer, Navy. Do you agree with that? One in a billion that the, these transponders would have went off other than by human means? It had to be human means. There's really no question about it in my mind. Uh, the, the, the sequence of events just dictates that. You had the transponders going off and then 14 seconds later, the ACAR system going off that tells me that a human being did it. The big question then is why? If a human being did it, it's either the pilots or a hijacker or a combination of the two. But we just don't know why it happened or where it went. It may very well still be uh, on the surface of the earth somewhere hidden where we can't find it. How difficult would it be to land a plane like that in that part of the world and no one would pick it up on radar or anything? If you're flying low enough and you've got every, if, you, if your transponders are turned off, and they can't see you on the radar, you can land it in a desert, you can land it in an open area, it doesn't even have to be an airport. Uh, you can land it in six, 7,000 feet or less sometimes, mm. depending on the skill of the pilot. And the thing is, you don't have to intend to take off from where you land it. That airplane could be deconstructed, boxed up, put on a ship and sent somewhere else. Got it, all right, more with Philip coming up and we'll look at more of the theories in, in just a little bit. Let's welcome back our expert, Philip Holloway, pilot, a certified flight instructor, former police officer and an attorney. Here's another theory coming f really off of that poll we had right there. This is a Facebook post from Rob saying this plane was hijacked, landed on a remote island airstrip, and the hijackers are getting their acts together to start asking for ransom. Are you in that camp that this potentially was hijacked and may have landed somewhere? I'm pretty close to that camp. I don't know what their intentions are, and I agree with the gentleman from the G uh, FBI, by the way. This just doesn't make sense. We, other, we have other U.S. officials saying that um, these communications devices were systematically shut down, and that indicates a nefarious purpose. And if it is on an island somewhere or landed in a desert, what they're going to do with it next, that's the really frightening thing. Maybe they're going to start asking for some ransom, but I doubt it. I think if they were going to do that, they would have already done it. So I believe that if, if it has been hijacked and it's landed somewhere, they have other plans for that airplane and it would be a perfect delivery system for some type of a weapon. Yeah, that's so frightening to hear that. Okay, the, uh, the follow-up to that is, isn't it, wouldn't it be hard to land a 777 without being picked up by some sort of detection device? Because where would you land it in that remote part of the world? Well, I guess you'd have to know exactly what islands were out there. 
And if you were going to plan something like this, it would have to be meticulously yeah. planned. And you would know, and you would have done your research. Um, you could do it in about 6,000, 7,000 feet, maybe a little bit less, depending on the skill of the pilot. You may not be able to take it off uh, from that same landing strip because it's going to need more room to take off. But I think you could get it down in, in a much shorter period, in a much shorter distance. Okay, let's get back to the transponders uh, again. And, um you know, I heard one theory from an expert that held out the theory that maybe this was a depressurized cabin. You lose pressure and all of a sudden, what, like that, it becomes 60 below, right, in there. And that the transponders would, one would shut off and then the next one would shut off in a systematic way. Or you're saying, no, that's really not a likely scenario. I don't see how that's the likely scenario because the engines continue to run, okay? And the engines will supply power, they will supply electricity. And as you heard uh, in the simulator segment, the transponders don't require that much electricity. And when, when we have a, an official, a senior official in the U.S. saying that these were systematically shut down, it implies to me that it's a human being doing that. Got it. Let's take a look. We have some of the more, uh, I wouldn't call them popular, but maybe plausible theories, most common out there. And we've talked about some of them. Hijacked by terrorists, turned off all communications. We've hit on that. Uh, hijacked by pilots or crew. Uh, Pilot suicide mission. I mean, would you have expected to have found some debris at this point? I think if, so. If, I, if it went down. Right. I think if this was a pilot suicide mission, you wouldn't necessarily have them systematically shutting down the transponders. If that's what they wanted to do, they're just going to nose it mm -hmm. over and dive straight into the ocean. Right. And then you're going to have to have both of them because I can't imagine that two individuals in the cockpit both have the same suicidal ideation at the same time. Right. Hey, last theory on that uh, most common list. Mass electrical failure, would that explain anything you've seen so far? No, because it goes back to the sequence of events. Everything uh, shut down. The, the transponders have an on and off switch, and those were switched off apparently. And then the ACAR system, 14 seconds later, started to experience problems. And then uh, some of the information indicates that the ACAR system, which is a separate system that the air, cr air crew uses to communicate with the airline, that it was attempting to send some kind of a signals out um, even uh, after uh, 14 or 15 seconds. So I think, I think that the time frame uh, tells us that it was a human being doing this. Got it. Phil, great work as always. Uh, I'm sure we'll have you back as this continues to play out uh, unless something happens very soon. Thanks again. Thank you. All right.